Hello everyone, this is Evo and welcome back to yet another AFK Journey video. So in this AFK Journey video, we are going to cover the ultimate Dream Realm tier list. So before I begin, there's a few disclaimers I'd like to make. So I've been looking at the comments and people have been asking me to do the Dream Realm guides. No worries, I'm going to get it pumped out by this week. No worries about that. So if you guys want to see more Dream Realm related guides and strats and builds, do remember to like and subscribe to see more, right? I'll definitely put them out. So stay tuned for those. But for today's video, I'm going to cover a tier list to talk about how the different units actually fare in the game mode itself. And my tier list as usual will be slightly different from the usual one. I'll probably review Prince's tier list as well, but I don't think it matters that much because in general Dream Realm, I'll say like the meta and the strat is pretty consistent. So units that are good on one tier list, there's a very high chance it's going to be good on another one. So I will see how, right? So we will stay tuned for that. But for today's video, let's start with the tier rating system. So we have the meta end game units for this game mode. So these units, right, we have two units on the list, right, Meryl Lee and Reyna, I'm going to talk about why. These units are units which basically appears on nearly every single team for endgame uh, damage dealing. If you want to deal pick damage, if you want to be a top damage dealer, these units are your best bet at getting to those positions, right? These units are the late gamers of Dream Realm. They are your damage dealers, they are your best support and... They just do insanely good stuff in the game mode itself. So they are your late gamers. And then we have the niche unit. So in this group, niche units are units which are good for specific bosses. But in general, they might not be units you want to use for like all the content. Like for the meta teams or the meta units, they're units that you use in nearly every boss. Whereas for the niche units, because we have four bosses right now, niche units are units that are decent in one or two of the bosses. And you can actually use them there in the top teams or you can use them as substitutes for the meta units depending on the boss you're fighting and we have downgrades so for downgrades downgrades are units which are generally uh, not as good as a meta unit you can try to run them i think they fit in specific niches in terms of um like their power level that you can use them but if you want to be a top ranker they are definitely not units you go to because they just don't deliver as well as the top damage dealer so in dream realm you just want to do as much damage as possible or you want to have very specific skill set that boosts your team's damage output in general so that's why um these are units which are okay if you have that very high tier you can use them but if you want to focus on like best damage you should go for the meta units or the niche units to get your best damage so we have your early to mid game tier as well so these early to mid game tiers are basically units which are decent in the early to mid part of the dream realm cycle so um people have been asking me how to define early mid and late so for dream realm there's a few difficulty stages they have common one all the way until endless so i think anything beyond difficulty two or three or like one of the higher tiers um i, I say like somewhere in the midpoint that is the mid game so some of these units they are decent until that point like once you hit that point you might need more damage right or you might need more debuff on the enemy and then this unit will start to fall off so these units are just your early to mid game units which in general i'll say they are more defensive by nature units which can keep your team healthy to run through the full cycle um they are usually in this tier but because they don't offer much offensive capabilities they generally don't scale well into the mid to late game so that's why they're here right but they, they can still be used if you're, if you're still in the early to mid stage so that's why i put them in a separate tier here and lastly we have the walker tier which are Basically, units you don't want to run in Dream Realm. They're just not very good in general. And if you invest in these units, chances are they're not for Dream Realm purposes. So without further ado, let us start with the Walker tier. And in the Walker tier, we have Walker himself. Um, Walker tier, Walker, right? Enough said. Very bad unit. Don't bother. Like, he does have a little bit of damage potential, but Lightbringer has a bunch of really, really good units for uh, the Dream Realm itself that honestly, Walker is just not worth investing. There with the two hamsters, which are generally not very good. Then the next group of unit I want to put is the defensive tankers. So we have Lumon and uh, Danny. So Danny is very, very defensive. She doesn't offer any offensive prowess and she doesn't offer anything for the team. So you won't be using her to protect your team. You won't be using her for her like uh, debuff abilities. Right? Her debuff is like taunting. It's like self buffing, keeping herself healthy. But all these are just not like factors you look at for Dream Realm. So that's why she's here. Then we have Lumon. So Lumon in general is just a bad unit. Same unit in the Walker tier still going to be in walker tier in dream realm that's generally a really bad unit so talking about the walker tier in my previous tier list there's another unit in the walker tier known as atalanta so atalanta actually has a few niches in terms of uh like uh, doing damage and having stun 
But her kit is just in general not very good for Dream Realm because first of all the bosses are mostly control immune so her stun doesn't play a role and second of all damage wise right like I mentioned Lightbringer has a bunch of really good units and there's a bunch of really good um, damage dealers out there so you generally don't run Atalanta as well that's why she's also in the walker tier for Dream Realm so um, the next group of unit I want to put here is your assassins so Sylvina as well as Barrel um, maybe maybe Seth to a certain extent but Seth does have a niche though, because Seth actually complements really well with Kruger. So I'm not going to put uh, Seth in the walker tier. So these two units in general, they don't have synergy with the meta units, number one. Number two, they're assassins or rogue characters that are uh, generally more for PvP or sniping purposes for the different contents. So I won't include them in my upper tiers for Dream Realm because I won't recommend people to use them for Dream Realm per se. So um, another few units that I'll put here is um, the AoE damage dealers. Uh, namely Arden, right? Um, oh yeah, I'll put Salazzo here as well. Salazzo generally like a toilet bowl unit. So not going to explain too much. He's just really bad. Like you don't see people using him anywhere and he's a toilet bowl unit. So even for Dream Realm, he's still toilet bowl no matter at which stage of the game. Nobody uses him. And then uh, AOE damage dealer, right? The next one, uh, we have Arden. Um, I think Arden specifically. Maybe a bit of Iron, right? Maybe a little bit of Iron. And uh, I think Carol... Okay, Carolina is, uh, I'll say, subjective because this unit does have single target potential. So I'm just going to put Carolina in a downgrade. So um, that's for the AOE section. The reason why Iron and Arden is here... Okay, Arden is here... I would say that Arden is not usable. But uh, if you compare Arden with other units, his kit is definitely not meant for the bosses. So Arden's kit scales a lot around control, his ability to entangle the enemies, his ability to gain energy from like enemies having control effect. They're all very, very powerful. But like I mentioned, the bosses are all control immune. So his kit is just going to be greatly weakened. And even in bosses where you need AoE damage dealing, right, you don't actually use Arden for that case. So that's why I put him in the Walker tier specifically for Dream Realm. But this unit is very strong everywhere else, by the way, in the late game. Then same thing for Iron, right? Iron has this um, like uh, debuff as well as reposition ability, but you can't boost the boss. So his gimmick is not going to work. And I'm just going to put him in the walker tier because early game wise, Iron and Arden, they are pretty bad units, right? Before they get their EX weapon, before they get the later levels, they're really bad. So they can't even fit into the early to mid game list. So that's why they're here. Um, I think that's pretty much it for this part, the walker tier. I kind of want to put Valen here, but Valen does have a little bit of early mid game potential. Uh, I also want to put Santandra here, but Santandra also has some early to mid game potential. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I think that's pretty much it for the walker tier. Right, I'm going to talk about the next uh, early to mid game potential unit, which you can use, right? So I think I think that's all that I want to put. Oh yeah, Viperion. Okay, so Viperion has a similar issue with Arden, right? So let, let's move down this one first. So Viperion has a similar issue with Arden in a sense. Viperion has excellent control, has excellent AoE damage, but like a lot of his kit doesn't work against the boss. So as a bossing unit, he's not very good. Like you can definitely run him if you have him highly invested and you have no other units, but then again, you just have other way better units and his kit is definitely not for Dream Realm. So that's why I'm putting him in a Walker tier. Not a bad unit, but it's just not meant for Dream Realm. So that's for Walker. I guess, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. I want to put Kafra here, but you guys will be surprised. Kafra actually has some sort of synergy or even downgrade so i'm going to talk about why i'm going to put kafra i'm going to put valence some of the toilet bowl units are included in my tier list in the early to mid game units here uh let's see who are the other toilet bowl unit yeah brutus right these three okay so let's talk about it these three units right they are my toilet bowl unit in my ultimate beginners tier list and the reason why i put them in the early to mid game is that number one valen has early game stats which is good for early game damage pushes and at the same time uh, Valen and Brutus, they have some sort of AoE ability which you can actually use against one of the boss known as Cyclops where you need the AoE clearing prowess. So they have some use there. On top of that, Brutus has a defense down. He has 5 second inbound which could buy more time for more damage to be jammed into the boss. So definitely a usable early to mid game frontliner tank or debuffer. For Valen's case, he has some sort of attack boost after he uses his ultimate. So his damage potential is still there. Like he's definitely not going to scale anywhere after mid game but do decent as for Kafra's case Kafra actually has quite a bit of things in his kit he actually has a defense debuff but I think the main issue with Kafra is that um I think Wilder's side just don't have a lot of physical attacker or either that the physical attackers are not really good and the thing is like 
um, you have a uh, better like warrior units that you can use and they're just really meta units up there that does Karthra's job better so in the future I think this unit might be able to go into downgrade or even meta depending on the new units introduced but right now I'm just going to put him here just a very early to mid game unit uh then continuing like on the wilder's faction we're gonna put in heroin so yeah heroin okay so heroin rowan to a certain extent can also be considered okay actually no rowan's not i mean uh, uh damien's not really a good early unit so i'm not gonna put him there yeah i don't think people want to use uh damien although damien has a 50 okay damien has a little bit of damage so damien could be downgrade so for the early to mid game healer slash support portion right we're gonna put uh centrana here as well as Faye here so first of all heroin has an excellent healing capability or the best healer in the game so you can definitely use heroin's heal to help you type through uh the boss's damage but as you move towards the mid to end game right you're looking at more offensive prowess. You're looking to do as much damage as possible. So Heroin's kit that doesn't provide any sort of offensive power is just not meant for Dream Realm. So that's why she's here. Then Satrana. Satrana has the ability to buff the damage output of your team by a little with her second skill. But Satrana as an individual unit just doesn't perform very well. And she's a magic, uh, she's a mage character which doesn't fit into doesn't really fit into like the the whole like physical damage uh, environment in the late game so her buff is good she also has this uh, magic uh magic defense buff which makes her good against a uh, magic attack damage dealer very very niche role but against the bosses i don't think it matters so that's why i can only put her in the early to mid game purely because she has a damage buff the hell do a little bit more damage in the early to mid game so Faye, i'm gonna put her here as well in the early to mid game because Faye's ultimate is uh decent right if you think about her Q to give attack speed but in general um the reason why she's here is also because Lightbringers they are they have some of the best units and at the same time face ultimate is uh quite random it's a diamond shaped skill which you can't control because in dream realm right what happens is it's all auto so you can't really position how the diamond shape is placed so you can't fully utilize the skill unless you're able to manual in um the game mode itself so that's one problem that shakir faced as well like they do, they actually got downgraded because of the change in mechanics from auto i mean from manual to auto so for those of you guys who don't know at some point in time dream realm was actually a manual game mode so in manual there's actually some units that are better than in auto so Faye is one of them because her ultimate is very position based so i wouldn't give her like the downgrade position because she's not even that good in the late game due to how her ultimate works right you can't really position to maximize the ability and you want to maximize all the units ability in order for you to hit peak damage so that's why she's over here in the early to mid game okay so the next two units that i want to include in this uh, list is actually lucius as well as um and tendra so these two units they are good defensive tanks and in the early to mid game where you need some sort of survival or you need shielding from like an uh, ally to shield everybody right especially lucius aoe shield if you put your unit all together all the units get shielded your units get protected from the aoe damages or whatever damage is going to incoming from the boss itself so this unit actually serves a very good defensive role for the team and also uh Antendra has this uh, mauler buff which is uh, really good because mauler has some of the best units for dream realm as well so there's a reason why they are here because uh, they have some sort of synergy with the best units and you can use them for defensive purposes in the early to mid game so that's why the two tanks are here and next unit i'm going to put here is uh, seth so okay seth used to be pretty decent for dream realm but i think with all the latest changes to his kit as well as this unit being more pvp centric he's not as good as he used to be so different from the other rogue units uh in the thing right seth actually has really good uh damage stacking potential if you have his ex weapon unlocked and in the early game he has some sort of lifesteal and his synergy with the molar faction especially with the likes of kruger being a physical defense but uh debuff right so this unit is definitely also on the late game meta and also like his ability to do a lot of damage from the ultimate and his ability to lifesteal to keep himself healthy is quite okay for the early to mid game but i think he just falls off quite a lot at least uh from what i observe like i don't think anyone use him beyond the mid game and at the same time i also won't see a team where you want to use him beyond the mid game so that's why he's in the early to mid tier then one unit which i think uh could be a downgrade is Laika. so i'm a little bit conflicted about Laika because Laika is a unit which this uh which you you have a attack speed buff as well as a defense debuff as well as aoe and i'll say 
okay damage. Like, I think Laika's biggest weakness is her lack of damage. So I'm just gonna put her here. I think her tier can be definitely upgraded because... Okay, the, re the reason I've said many, many times. Like, if you're playing a physical team, there are better debuffers in Kruger, right? So you don't need Laika. And at the same time, if you're talking about attack speed buff, some of the units have way more disgusting abilities in a late game. So Laika won't even be considered a downgrade because she's like a jack of all trades, but master of none. So she doesn't excel at anything specifically. And at the same time, the Wilder's faction tech just doesn't really benefit her in the Dream Realm itself. So as you guys can see from here, right, there's a bunch of Wilder's units that are in the Walker tier and the early to mid game tier. So in general, Wilder they are not meant for Dream Realm, at least in the current meta. So can Laika and Kafra be a meta unit in the future moving forward? I think yes, provided if there's more unit support and more like Dream Realm units from the Wilder's faction to change this meta itself. So that's why I'm just gonna put uh, Laika here, unfortunately. So I, I, I do think she has a potential to go up as a downgrade, as a good substitute and a niche unit, but provided there's a team for her and provided the meta shifts away from what it is right now. So next one, um, I will say, I will say Niru, right? Cause I, okay, the thing about Niru is this, like, I, I think Niru has a mix of damage and burst heals, but his kit just feels very, very weird. Like he has a siphon ability, so soul, soul something ability, which keeps your him alive for longer. But the thing is, I think if your team revives in spirit form, they also do less damage. At the same time, his heal is not a massive AoE heal that benefits everyone. So against bosses with massive AoE damage potential, like Skyclops, and against the likes of Yeti, which silences this unit, he's gonna be practically quite useless because he's a magical damage dealer. And as you guys can see from the pool, a bunch of the good magical units in the, the list, right? They are not in the higher tier. So you can see that the physical units or units that are physical by nature, they're just stronger. So from a support point of view, you can definitely run Niru, but he won't be your best unit. And I think his heal actually functions the best in the early to mid game. As you move towards the late game where the bosses are dealing bigger damage, then he will definitely fall off as a support unit. So that's why I put him here. Um, I think that's that for this early to mid game. Carolina, actually, I'm thinking whether or not to put her in the Carolina is definitely not an early to mid game unit but Carolina has some insane late game potential so I'm just gonna put her here I'm gonna talk about why but uh, I think maybe Igor yeah uh, Igor is also a very early to mid game unit okay so for Igor's case right um Igor is a good disruptor he's very very annoying when he's bouncing around and redirecting attention from the enemy but against a dream realm boss his kid just is less effective like he's still good at tanking but he doesn't offer a lot of damage and neither does he offer anything for the team so early game wise you can definitely put him in the front line to tank the hits of the bosses and then he's gonna spawn tombstones and then jump around but in general i don't think he's that good of a dream realm unit so uh beyond the mid game point don't bother investing in him if you want to focus on dream realm but you can definitely give him a try at the lower tiers um let's see let's see hmm Actually, I also want to put Brian in the early to mid game. Okay, so yeah, I'm just going to put Brian here because, okay, Brian's kit, right? Uh, early game has a lot of power, but I think as you get his EX weapon, his kits become slightly more defensive, which makes him a good PvP unit in a sense because he can survive against uh, certain snipings, right? Because he's got inbound and he can do damage and stun, right? So his kit is very, very PvP centric. And in the early game where a lot of his damage part of the kit unlocks, right? He could be a good early to mid game unit. But like I mentioned earlier, multiple times, right? Mage units in this tier list, as you can see, they are just generally weaker. And in the current meta, the strongest mage unit would definitely be Cassidy. So uh, I don't think Cassidy and Brian has good synergy. Brian has better synergy with Laika. So Wilder as a faction in Dream Realm is also really weak. So I'm just going to put Brian in the early to mid game. In fact, I, I don't think I'll regret it because I don't think people recommend you to use Brian in Dream Realm specifically. So yeah, pretty good early mid game, but because his kit doesn't scale into bigger damage, I'm just going to put him here. So early to mid game unit. Um, I think that's that, right? Some might argue that Damien could be, could be in the early to mid game, but Damien is not good early to mid. In fact, Damien might be, okay, Damien is a downgrade in a sense. Okay, so I think that's it for the early to mid game. I look at the list of units, I think, yeah, the rest of the units are pretty decent for different game modes. So next, we, we move on to the downgrades. So we have Carolina, we have Damien. 
So the reason why I put Carolina in the downgrade is because I believe she has massive single target damage potential. If you unlock her EX weapon, she has a magical defense debuff and her snowball ability actually deals more damage over time. So her kit sounds really good on paper against the bosses, but in a, in a setting where magical teams in general, they're just not as good or you have better choices, I don't think I can put her in the late game meta or niche unit. So that's why she's in the downgrade category. So moving forward, I think if you get more support, or we have a more magical base team or a more magical base threat, right? She will be better. So that's why I put her there. Then for Damien's case, Damien actually has really insane late game healing prowess, being able to heal a lot while doing damage as well as providing haste support for your team. So he is a very, very good all around unit, but I think his kit itself doesn't provide what you actually need to max out your damage. And he's not actually a niche for any of the other bosses. So that's why I put him in the downgrade category. You can definitely try to run him if you do need a support with heal and you need a little bit of haste for your team. But in general, I think he's uh, not that good of a unit to be in the meta itself. So that's for the downgrades. Um, downgrades, I'll put uh, Cecilia as well. Maybe Cecilia is also okay in a niche. Maybe Cecilia is also okay. okay. I'm very conflicted for Cecilia because... Um, I haven't seen people use Cecilia for the longest time possible in endless mode. Um, partially because of the meta and also partially because of her kit. But I guess you can put Cecilia in the niche unit. Because against Skyclops, I think Cecilia is decent. But against every other boss, uh, she's pretty much a downgrade at best. Like, okay, the reason why I'm conflicted is because I think Cecilia is a downgrade from the meta teams. But he, there's a boss where you need some sort of AOE. And I think Cecil does well there if you're building around a Grave Bond team. But uh, in general, I'll say she's in the middle of the pack, right? Niche and downgrade depends on how you build your team. But I'm just going to give this babe a niche unit because uh, in my honest take, I don't think she's good in the late game and uh, you have better choices. But if you don't have better choices and since everybody's going to invest in her until Mythic, plus until supreme plus based on the current way people are recommending units then she could definitely fit into your team as a late game unit with a lot of stats so i'm gonna put her in a niche portion so um i think downgrades right now i would say um i think no rice is not actually a downgrade rice is good against uh sakai clops okay when you need aoe i think rice is okay um Okay, okay, unfortunately, I'll put Donnell in downgrade for Dream Realm. So, Donnell has insane AoE potential, uh, AoE potential, and Donnell has insane damage output potential. But there's two factors you need to consider when using Donnell. Number one, you need very precise team building to maximize his ability. Number two, you need a lot of investment. And Donnell's position as a unit is that even if you do invest in Donnell, he's not actually meant for Dream Realm in the first place. He's more meant for PvP or just... Uh, battle drill right game modes where you need his aoe prowess more so i i don't think he's worthy to be in a niche unit because uh you can argue that you need to build a team around him and his his kit is not like a thing you build around in dream realm specifically so he's like more of a okay good to have unit in dream realm but he's not a unit which you must have or a unit which you need to have to have max damage in some bosses so that's why he's in a downgrade um i think based on this list um i guess we are good to go i guess okay maybe maybe morale okay i'm very conflicted with morale because uh morale's aoe damage right is actually quite decent for sky Corps, but his kit is neutered in like not so good in three other bosses okay i'll put her in the downgrade because i don't think she's that niche you can definitely try to run her. She has a lot of damage, by the way. And because she's a light bringer, I'm going to give her that. You can try to make her perform well in doing damage. But I don't think she, she is a meta unit or she's not a niche must-have unit for specific bosses. So very, very conflicted between uh, Cecilia and Muriel because the reason why they are not in the early to mid game is because they have some sort of damage potential and they have AoE. But I'm conflicted because I don't know whether or not I should put them in the niche or the downgrade because... I personally think they are not must have for specific bosses or they are not like good to have for specific bosses but they are kit. Okay, Mira is recommended for all the boss so you guys can see why she's here. 
but I, I still don't think she's a good unit for that boss, even though she's recommended. So I'm just going to put her in a downgrade. But in general, downgrade units, you can definitely still use them and try them if you really want to. But for Miral's case, I don't think people will invest in her. So I'm just going to put her in a downgrade. So that's why she's here. And that's that. Next, mo uh, let us move on to the niche units, right? So for the niche units, uh, let's put uh, Rowan. Okay, let's put Rice. Oh, wait, there's one more unit in the downgrade. I'll put Parisa. Okay, so Parisa has an insanely good buff that actually makes Donnell really powerful as well. But I think you, you guys see the pattern, right? Wilders in general, they're all at the lower tier. So if you look at her as a standalone unit, she's a mage, she buffs Donnell, which is your physical attacker. So the team building portion is really, really hard to maximize your damage. So uh, I think given the team, given future upgrades, given further units uh, introduction to boost her kit or boost the usage of her kit i think she can definitely be upgraded but now i'll just put her here together with the downgrade units so these units are units with potential and you can use them but right now i don't think they're the best unit you want to use for dream Realm. so let's move on to the niche unit so cc i already talked about her um decent damage right synergizes with currently some of the best units in the pool and she's gonna be heavily invested by most people based on the current meta so if you need a physical damage dealer and you have her at really high rank like supreme plus or supreme or mythic plus you can definitely run her so she's okay for skyclops because you need some aoe prowess and in general i think if you don't have the topmost meta unit and you have cc at a very high rank i think she's still okay to push your damage so that's for Cecilia. then we have rowan so rowan doesn't offer much offensive capability but the heal numbers as well as the uh, energy cycling that this unit provides right is really invaluable in the late game because in the late game we have this starstruck spell which is the strongest dream realm relic in the game or the strongest dream realm artifact so that spell basically every three skills usage you use right you will prop of like a ring of fire which deals damage to the boss as well as debuff the boss itself so i'll save that for a separate at the artifact video but uh rowan has this ability where he's able to like give as much uh, energy to like as many targets as possible so all the units are going to use their ultimates faster so you guys can see where i'm going right being able to heal being able to use the ultimate as well as him just moving around is really good for necro drake so that's why i put him in the niche category definitely by no means meta but he's a unit which i think if you have and you want to use and you have some synergy you can definitely use so that's why he's here and then for rice case rice is actually a pretty decent damage dealer and he has airy prowess and he has synergy with one of the best late game meta unit which is kruger so he does have decent slotting in terms of um like two of the bosses but uh i don't think he excels beyond that because uh he's not a single target unit per se so he is maybe like the second best damage kind of unit you want to have in your team, but definitely not the top by all means. But his kit does work well with two of the bosses, so that's why I'm putting him in the niche category. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, Shakir. Okay, Shakir is a super duper niche unit in a sense. Shakir used to be one of the top meta units in Dream Realm. Like I mentioned earlier, previously Dream Realm was a manual game mode. So Shakir actually has a looping aura which buffs the attack of allies within the aura itself. So being able to position him in a position where as many units benefit from the buff as possible is going to make him like an insanely good buffer. At the same time, he can act like a semi-tank. So you can throw him in the front line and then he can tank fire from the enemies. But right now, he's only really good for one boss, which is Yeti. So I'm just going to put him in the niche unit. Because in auto mode, this unit just flies around and then not many units actually get buffed from his skills. So there's no way you can manipulate it in auto mode. So he's super duper niche. But he used to be like these meta units, by the way. Shakir used to be here in in like the earlier versions where manual was a thing so now only a niche unit uh i personally think vala is also really niche because uh, vala has insanely good damage but uh Merrily is already on top for the the uh, late game meta single target unit and Merrily is also light bringer so i don't see a point where you want to use vala unless it's for necro drake where you need a little bit of mobility where she can jump around and she still deals good damage there and obviously um her being a generally good light bringer unit is gonna give her some position if you already have her invested because you put for her banner i think you can definitely use her so i'm putting her in the niche unit category um skalita as well skalita is also really really niche so skalita when, once you unlock her ex weapon once you unlock true damage once you uh, get a lot of stats on her her damage output potential is actually pretty decent but i think the biggest weakness of skalita is that you lose 15 seconds of damage output time with her and 
although she charges up her attack and then her attack falls right like that 15 second of damage loss is quite big if you want to min max your damage so right now she's actually good for aoe purpose obviously like i mentioned multiple times and she's also good single target damage but she's definitely by no means meta so i'm just gonna put her in a niche category i think um i think cassidy is uh very very niche as well but i think the late game players are trying to figure things out with her so she is currently i'll say more niche than meta because she's not used in multiple teams okay the reason why i say people are fig trying to figure things out with her is because of <clears throat> odai odai right this hyena unit over here because odai is a magical damage dealer and cassidy has magic uh defense debuff with a lot of magic damage potential so she can be a good primary dps at the higher ranks i think she probably need a lot of stats to scale so we shall see whether or not she moves up the rank but in general as a normal player that is playing the game right now at the start and you're thinking of units to build i don't think cassidy is a top priority so i'm gonna put her in the niche unit category um next one is tamasia yeah tamasia is super duper niche uh necro drake <laughs> hint hint necro drake so stay tuned for my full dream realm guide i'm going to explain how their mechanics work and why they are good but yeah she's she's good for one ball so i'm going to put her here uh i think koka in general is a pretty good niche unit as well if you don't have uh the the last the smoky in your team right i think koka is pretty decent she the damage reduction that Koka provides for the team basically makes sure that your team doesn't die. And on top of that, she has a little bit of damage boost for the team and she has some form of attack buff and lifesteal, which keeps your team in full cycle, right? It keeps your team healthy and you can continuously do damage to the boss. So I'm going to put her in the niche unit category. She's more like if you don't have the best support or you don't have the optimal support, then she will be the unit uh, that you'll be running. So that's for our dear coco over here so that's for the niche one so before i go into the last tier which is the late game meta units we're gonna just take a quick look at the walker tier the early to mid tier the downgrade as well as the niche tier and just briefly talk about them once again so for the walker tier don't bother if you invest in those units they're either not for dream realm or they're just not good in general early to mid game unit i think to a certain extent you can run them all the way until you you need more damage pump or you need to specialize into teams or units to burst your damage so this is where you drop them and they are just not as good moving forward then downgrades are potential units or units with a capability to become meta or become niche but they're just generally not very flexible or not very strong right now but they definitely have room for improvement so niche units are like i mentioned niche units which people run in meta teams they they actually perform a certain role or there's a, a specific condition where they're actually good in the bossing compartment Oh, that's why CCR honestly could be in a downgrade, but I'll just put her in a niche because most people had, will have her at a high rank and they're going to think that wow, CCR is damn good for damage dealing. But let me be honest, she's not really good. So that's that. And let us move on to the last tier, which is the meta end game unit. So best damage leader in the game for Dream Realm Merrily. True damage, critical strike, attack speed, uh, attack stat stacking. We combine all that together. She becomes an amazing single target unit her her randomness in jumping around doesn't really matter in boss because the boss is so big and she's going to be jumping around and then doing a bunch of damage so she's gonna be meta for a very long time or at least in the current meta she is the strongest single target damage dealer just off damage compartment right if you talk about any other thing i think she's not as good but just pure damage over 90 seconds merrily is probably one of the strongest if you're able to build up so that's merrily second unit reina so reina has been heavily promoted in multiple tier lists by multiple content creators and the very reason why he's created or rather why he's promoted is because he's one of the best late game support in the game so for reina's case right uh, Reyna's ability to cause the enemy to take 20% damage is invaluable and his ability to buff the attack of one ally, especially the carry unit, is also really insane. And on top of that, he has his Hippogen buff, which is a fractional buff, making him really flexible in terms of team building. So you can see where I'm going. Super meta, super good, pull for him. Kruger, best uh, debuffer in the game for physical team. Enough said, for now, I don't think he has any replacement yet, except for other units which allows the uh enemy to take more damage except for our dear torrent and our dear rainer so uh kruger very very good for physical teams and then we have odai uh best single target mage damage dealer his damage over time is good in the early game and even in the late game he still scales well in certain bosses and if you don't have 
any other units to do damage he's quite decent right in all the four bosses like he, he's definitely by no means somebody that can beat merrily in terms of sheer damage but he's quite there in fact i'll say he's at least uh, number two or three in damage if not for late game corin so we since i'm talking about corin right this spear guy over here he is one of the stronger late game warriors because uh, he has a shooting ability so he can act as like a shooter and sustain for a team while having a lot of damage and his damage come from his ex weapon so this is a late game uh unit early game he feels like shit without the ex weapon he is pretty shitty so just take note but he transformed into the beast and on top of that he has this um faction bonus with merrily so it's easier to build a team with them so that's why when i did my tier list i actually mentioned that these two units they are together they are the zero to hero category because in the late game right these two units damage potential is out of the roof so that's why they're here then uh smoky uh the best healer amongst the bunch because uh, his heal provides haste and attack. That's the most important thing about his kit. And on top of that, if you have EX weapon unlocked, right, his EX weapon actually deals damage. So yeah, he's a pretty good offensive support. Not the best healer by any means, like he doesn't heal insane number of heroin, but he is what you need for Dream Realm purposes. So he's here. And then lastly, we have Torrent. Okay, so Torrent is obviously here for uh, many, many reasons. Number one, you need him for Kim Croker. Right, he is the only unit that can negate King Croker's insta kill. By the way, so he's a must there already. And on top of that, he has uh, magic. Uh, he has damage boost. So if you don't have Reyna or you don't have uh, any form of debuff on the enemy, Torrent is a good tank on the front line to absorb damage while applying a debuff to the enemy. So Torrent is really really good as a whole. And worst come to worst, you can put him as a mid shield, absorb the damage, and then he can use his ultimate and then return all the damage he take from the boss so he has a little bit of everything which makes him good and in the late game if you don't have the likes of Reyna if you don't have the likes of Kruger or you just need a unit to tank against King Croker I think Torren will be one of the best choice you have so hands down best tank in the game right now and this is the reason why because it's just very versatile everywhere in the game so yes that's pretty much it for this tier list so i'm gonna flash the tier list in a compact manner on screen and just briefly talk about my conclusion for this tier list so these units right now they are basically the units rating for the v 1.13 meta i think moving forward as the meta change we are going to see a shake up as some of these unit has the potential to go up depending on future units introduced and uh yeah that's pretty much it if you guys want to see me review print waste tier list for dream realm specifically once again do remember to leave a comment in the comment section below i know you guys love tier list so i'm gonna do it if you guys want to see it and that's it for this video stay tuned for the dream realm guides coming in the next few days thank you very much for watching remember to like and subscribe i'll see you guys again in my next video bye guys